All right, our next presenter is a first-time presenter and a first-time faculty member from the United Kingdom. He's been in uh, network marketing with the same company for 15 years. He's a mega network marketer in the United Kingdom. He's also a referee in the Champions League soccer division. So I want you guys, for the last lightning round session, to bring the thunder for Mr. Wes Linden. <laughs> I'd like to start by sharing with you a picture that captures the moment when I told my friends and family that I had joined a network marketing business. <laughs> There's that picture. Now, of course, that isn't really when I told my friends and family about my business. It was actually from a game back in England now, what I find is that everyone can be getting on perfectly well, and then I make one decision, and I get negativity all around me. That is what your new team members and your new distributors put up with all of the time. They make one simple decision, and that is to join your network marketing business, and for the next few days, weeks, months, whatever it may be, they are surrounded by negativity. So let me take you back to the 30th of November, 1997. I was at university, I was studying to become a teacher and working in a school as a classroom assistant. And I heard about a business opportunity that allowed me to earn some extra money in, some spare, in my spare time and perhaps have an even greater future than teaching was going to promise. I was really excited about it. So I agreed to go along to an opportunity presentation. Small problem. 1997, I was 20 years old. Now, I know that might surprise you because I appreciate I only look 22 now. <laughs> However, I was 20, I had no car, I had no money for the train, and I had no money for the joining fee. So I asked my dad to take me along to this presentation. Now, we drove in the car for about an hour, and he started asking me what it was all about. Now, of course, I had no skills, I had no training, I had no knowledge or information about the business, apart from what I'd been told by my possible sponsor. So what did I do? I basically threw up every little bit of information I could possibly think of, make up a load of stuff as well, in an extremely enthusiastic manner about this new business opportunity and about the network marketing profession. Your new team members are doing that all of the time. And that's what I really want to talk to you about today, how we can combat their first 24, 48, 72 hours where they go home, they say too much of the wrong stuff, and then we lose them. Because wouldn't it be, a, wouldn't it be good if we could actually retain more people who agree to sign up with our business. Would that be fair? Yeah. Anyway, we park up and we're walking into this hotel and my dad says to me, oh, one, one thing, um, do you have to pay to join? And I said, yes. And he went, ah, oh, Wes, it's a pyramid scam. If you told me about that before we'd left, I wouldn't have brought you here today. Your new team members go through that too. Anyway, we were there, so we went in anyway, and we sat down, and we listened to my potential sponsor run through a very simple company presentation. He didn't make anything up, he just stuck to the company presentation. We decided we'll go home and think about it, and uh, just as we were leaving, my sponsor did something that was very poignant. He handed me an audio cassette tape. Now, that dates it a bit. Who remembers audio cassette tapes? He handed me that and he said, have a listen to this in the car on the way home with your dad and I'll give you a call next week. So that's what he did. When we got home, I said to my dad, having listened to the tape, what do you reckon of that then? And he looked at me like he had done maybe two hours earlier and he said, Wes, you'd be crazy not to do this.
Now, I think we have this problem in our business. One decision, one decision from your new distributors can completely change the emotions of their friends and family. They start getting told about the network marketing plague or the pyramid scams people had heard about before and how one of their neighbors once knew someone whose family was kidnapped by pirates because they joined one of those things. <laughs> and then there's one group of very negative people. They step in with their negativity and explain to you what they think about the network marketing industry. And in England, we call those people the Guptas. Now, Guptas is actually spelled G-U-P-T-R. And what it stands for is generally unsuccessful people talking rubbish. You see, we spend lots of time trying to introduce new people to our business. We spend loads of time encouraging our team members to do the same. We wear badges, we put car stickers on the bumper, we invite our friends and family round for dinner, and then we accidentally leave brochures all over the place with the words, earn an extra $2,000 in your spare time, ask me how. We do all of those things. We put a lot in, and then we get very few people who actually write out a check and join our business. But when they do, what do we do? We send them home with nothing but enthusiasm. We just send them home with enthusiasm, no skills, no knowledge, no tools. So how can we protect them in their first 72 hours? It needs to be simple. It needs to pass Jordan Adler's eight-year-old test that he talks about in Beach Money. It needs to be so simple that an eight-year-old could do it. So here's my big tip for you, and it's what my sponsor did for me. You meet people in a coffee shop, maybe you invite them to an event, you talk to them on the phone, whatever it might be. Now, whether they join or not, I believe you should do exactly the same thing. And that is give them one of your official company prospecting tools to take back with them. Whether it be a CD, a DVD, an opportunity pack, give them one of those to take home. And as Richard Brooks said yesterday, if your company doesn't have those right now, you need to find them somewhere. You need to, you need to invent them yourselves. But that's what my sponsor did to me. He made me the messenger rather than the message. And that's what you need to do for your new team members. Now, if they've joined and they go home with that, you give them a fighting chance of not becoming target practice from their husband, wife, or partner. If they don't join, send them home with it anyway, because they can still show it to their husband, wife, or partner, and then hopefully that person will talk some sense into them like my dad with, did with me. If they're left with just enthusiasm and no skills, none of the skills that Big Al has been teaching for the last 172 years, <laughs> then they're out. Now, back in the UK, I, I've had this issue in my head for, for years that we don't make it simple enough to people. All I want them to do is give the tape or the CD or the, or the DVD to to their, their, their prospect or their new sign-up, take it home and just say to the person who says to them, well, what were you doing tonight? What's this thing you've signed up for? Simply say to them, look, let's have a watch of this or let's listen to this together so that they are simply the messenger. Anyway, I thought I'd put this to the test. Can this pass the eight-year-old test? So what I did is I got a load of children together and gave them some simple words to say to see whether they could do it or not so that I could then, at our next company convention, prove to our distributors that if their children can do it, then so can they. So let's take a look at that video now, please. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Hi, Megan. It's Izzy. Have you got a minute? It's just a quick call. I've started a new business. And I've got a fantastic DVD that explains it all. I just pleated my trousers. I wanted if you could do my five hours. I'd like you to take a look at it for me. Is I really value your opinion. I think it could really benefit to you. To you too. It will be much easier for me to show you face to face. When would it be good for you? Tuesday or Thursday? 
Okay, I'll drop it off then. Okay, bye now. See you later. I can jump a hurdle. I can wear a girdle. I can knit a sweater. I can fill it better. I can do most anything. Can you bake a pie? No. Neither can I. Anything you... Now, I believe we all need to use these simple company tools, whether we are top of our tree or a new joiner. If you're a new joiner, you don't know what to say anyway, so you need to use it. If you're top of the tree and you know everything about everything because you are a double chocolate dip, starship commander, platinum, diamond, gold, stars, something and another, if that's what you're about, you can't do the presentation to someone off your head because they can't do it either. You need to keep it simple so that they know that they can duplicate you. You see, if we fail to protect and insulate our new people in the early days, it costs you time, it costs you effort, it costs you the money that it took to get them to start with. It costs you the volume that they were possibly going to bring into your business. It costs you the chance to make a positive footprint on somebody else's life and make a contribution to the future of them and their family. And it sends someone back into the world with a negative impression about the network marketing uh, impression, uh, profession. Now, I believe that all the time we are creating what, we call, uh, what I call sliding doors moments. Now, I don't know if any of you remember a film uh, with Gwyneth Paltrow uh, called Sliding Doors. The basic gist of this was she was running for a train and the doors were about to shut. If she made the train before the doors shut, then her life would go in one direction. If she failed to make the train before the doors slid shut, then her life would go in a completely different direction. And we are creating sliding doors moments all the time. And just by giving that simple tool to your new distributor or the person who's just taken a look, that could be the thing that changes the course of their future. That's what my sponsor did for me, and that's why I'm in the business now. So I want to take you back to February 1998. I was about three months into my new business. And picture this, I'm working in a school, and I was in the staff room uh, where all the teachers congregate, and there were some business cards uh, around. And there was a business card from a guy that sold novelty gifts and books and stuff like that. And I'd remembered what they'd said on the training about you've got to get phone numbers and phone people up. So I took down his name and telephone number, and his name was Lawrence Wiseman. So I thought, I'll call him when I get home. Anyway, typically I get home and then I think, well, I'll leave it a few days, you know what it's like. I'll leave it till the weekend. So I get to Friday night and I'm about to pick up the phone and I look at the name again, it says Lawrence Wiseman, and I think, he could be Jewish. He doesn't want to call from me on a Friday night. I'll leave it till Saturday. So I get to Saturday, about to pick up the phone again and I look at the name again. Well, Lawrence Wiseman, if he is Jewish, you know, he'll be in synagogue, it's the day of rest, he's not gonna to wanna to hear from me. I'll leave it till Sunday. Get to Sunday. Look at the name again. Lawrence Wiseman. It's not the most Jewish name ever, is it? <laughs> I mean, he could be in church today, so he's not going to want to hear from me, is he? I'll leave it till next week. So, you know how it goes. You leave it and you leave it and you leave it. In the end, I got so fed up with this that I just threw the number in the bin. I thought, I'm not going to call this guy, stop thinking about it, threw the number in the bin. And just as I was about to walk away, I looked down at the bin, and there was that number just shining up at me on top of all the rubbish. And I remember a word that I'd heard, I remember a lesson I'd heard in a training, where they said about expensive mistakes, and I thought, that could be an expensive mistake. Because you know, in those days, you used to have to pay for all of your telephone calls, and phone calls were expensive. And, and particularly in England, you'd get these stuffy old men in networking say, I'm not paying for phone calls, they're too expensive. And that would be the kind of thing that would go on. And so I would be like, that could be an expensive call not to make. Much more expensive than the cost of the call. So I picked the number up and I called him. Well, because I was 20, I knew everything. <laughs> I mean, anyone got kids and understand that? <laughs> So I reinvented the wheel. I changed the system completely. I didn't bother with the company presentation. I didn't bother with the tape. I didn't bother with any of it. I thought I could do it better. And I did my very best presentation ever. I managed to keep it under two hours and 30 minutes. It came in at two hours 28, so I was pleased with that. Anyway, guess what? He didn't join. So I called up my sponsor and took some counsel from him, and he reminded me of some of the skills that I'd heard on the training. 
And he reminded me about the audio cassette tape. And I said I didn't have any, so he said, look, I'll drop some in the post to you. That was a slide indoors moment. He sent me that audio cassette tape, and a few days later, I arranged to go and see Lawrence Wiseman. Gave him the cassette tape, and he joined. Well, you might think it's good, but let me tell you about, <laughs> let me tell you about Lawrence's career. In Lawrence's career as a distributor with us, he didn't sign up a single customer. He never even became a customer himself. In fact, his entire volume was zero for his entire career. <laughs> but I was trying to build a culture that had empathy and understanding and made people feel that I cared. I wanted him to know that I cared about him and his family's financial future. Because I believe that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So I'd listen to stuff that Oren and Laurie Woodward talked about, and, and Chris Brady yesterday, about that kind of empathy and culture you want to create. So we kept in touch. Now, I'd listen to a Randy Gage audio cassette tape that said about building depth. Get together with your people, tell them that you can use your time and skills and their contacts and build an organization. So I said to Lawrence, come on, you must know at least two people. So yes, he did. He said, I know I've got my friend Richard, and I've got this lady I know called Elizabeth. I said, brilliant, let me talk to them. He said, no. I said, why not? He said, because you were rubbish on the phone to me, so I'm not letting you loose on my prospects. Anyway, I told him, speak to, uh, speak to Richard and give him the audio cassette tape. And he said, no way. I said, why? He said, because they cost one pound each, which is about $1.50. So he wouldn't spend the money on the tools. Anyway, what did he do? He spoke to them, spoke to Richard, and negged him out. Richard didn't join. So I did another slide indoors moment. I said to him, listen, I'm going to send you an audio cassette tape, and you give that to Elizabeth. He gave it to Elizabeth, and she joined. Immediately, I got in touch with uh, Elizabeth. We became friends. We started to build a relationship and a culture. I gave her an audio cassette tape so that she could let her negative partner hear it. And because of that, it insulated her and kept her in the business. That's a slide indoors moment as well. Let me tell you why. In 2013, Elizabeth's business will turn over somewhere in excess of 40 million US dollars. And that, that's just one leg in my team. Now, it's because of that that since the age of 20, when I dropped out of university, I've never had a proper job. <laughs> never had a proper job. Now, I don't say that to impress you. I say it because it impresses me. <laughs> <laughs> so what about Lawrence? What happened to Lawrence? Well, when it came to renewal time and we had to pay to, 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 to renew, which we had to do annually, because he was quite frugal, he decided he didn't want to and he quit. Slide indoors moment for him or what? In fact, from that day onwards, I renamed him Lawrence Unwiseman. <laughs> so what can your lesson be from this? Keep it simple. Use the company tools. Follow the system. Insulate your new people, whether they're personally sponsored or in your downline, from their negative friends and family, from their own personal mind monsters that tell them that they're not capable of making money, that people like them can't succeed. Build a culture of support in, your early, uh, in, their, in their early career. In their first 72 hours in particular, really build that protection around them. And I'm doing a breakout session a little bit later. I'll be talking a lot more about that. Now, if you do this, instead of finding yourself in a situation where you're on the field all alone. Can you see me there? All alone on the field? Instead of having a situation where everybody leaves your business and you're on, the, uh, on your own on the field, you can build a business where you have thousands and thousands of people around you. Thank you very much.